Housing inventory increased by only 59 homes this week in the entire country. Could this be the peak for housing inventory for this year? The average sales price in Dallas County increased by 2.5% from last month and is up 6.9% year over year. Where is the housing crash? Both Fannie Mae and MBA are both expecting mortgage rates to come down to 6.8% and 7.2% respectively by the end of this year. Personally, I think it's very likely we've seen the top for mortgage rates this year already. How can you best navigate this crazy real estate market? My name is Mike. I'm a real estate agent here in the Dallas area, and every Monday I give you a weekly update covering all of Dallas and Collin counties. We're looking for trends. We're also tracking mortgage rates as well as mortgage purchase applications, as that's our best leading indicator to what demand will look like 30 to 90 days from now. We're looking at things like median list price, days on market, how many homes are having price decreases, and what's inventory looking like. And if you stick around until the end, it's my favorite part. It's a top 10 ranked chart of both hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin counties. If this sounds like something you're to, make sure and hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that info is in the description below. Okay, today is November 13th. Let's see what the data is telling us. And if this is an old video, you can click the playlist here, and it'll take you to the latest weekly market update. First up is market news. And actually, the biggest news this week hasn't happened yet. It's happening tomorrow. It's the CPI report. Needless to say, a lot is riding on this report. Good inflation, and rates will come down bad inflation, rates may go up. It's more or less that simple. So I wanted to spend more time this week talking about this pending housing recession that I keep hearing about. And just so you know, I've actually been hearing about this housing recession long before COVID or anything. This is something that people believe is going to happen every single year. Every time I've ever bought a house, people have told me not to because there is going to be a housing recession. Every single time, every year, nothing has changed and nothing ever will change. You can believe that from here until the end of time, every year someone is gonna be telling you housing prices are gonna crash and you shouldn't buy. That's a given. So let's look at the evidence. Last month, mortgage rates were up to 8%, as well as demand was naturally dropping just due to seasonality. So we had probably our lowest demand month to date. And what happened? The average home sold price increased in Dallas County by 2.5% month over month and is up 6.9% year over year. So where is the evidence for this crash? GDP is going up, Inflation is going down, housing prices are still going up even with record low demand and crazy high mortgage rates. What specifically is it that keeps you believing a price crash is coming to the housing market? One common thought I keep hearing is that if prices keep going up, people won't be able to afford it and prices have to come down. Well again, this is something that people say to me every single year, yet prices keep going up and people keep affording it. If this were true, how are home prices still going up? The answer is because there are enough people who can still afford the low supply of houses available. It's easy to feel like because we can't afford or we don't want to pay this much, that everyone else must be in a similar situation. And that's just not true. We have to step outside the bias of ourselves and look at the data. The data is showing you that there are more people willing and able to buy at these prices than there are homes for sale which is why prices go up. The demand is outpacing the supply. Now, here's something that may be helpful to understand. When it comes to affordability, mortgage rates are the big factor, not housing prices. Prices can go up significantly and still be affordable if rates drop at all. So if you're waiting for prices to drop because you think people won't be able to afford higher prices, I'm gonna show you why that doesn't really check out. The reality is what people can't afford is gonna be higher mortgage rates, but they can afford higher priced houses. If mortgage rates drop just 1%, you'll be able to afford afford about 12% more house for the exact same monthly payment. And that's quick math I want you to remember. If rates go down 1%, you can afford 12% more house. The inverse is true as well. If rates go up 1%, you can afford about 12% less house. So if you're looking at a $400,000 house, and rates go from seven and a half to six and a half, that home can go up to 448,000, 12%, and still have the exact same monthly payment as if you had bought it at 400,000, with the seven and a half rate. This is why housing prices can still go up significantly and still be affordable if rates drop at all. And it's also what is going to happen if rates come down. If rates were to go from seven and a half to 6%, Certainly, that's going to bring in more demand. We still have limited supply. That means prices have to continue up. So if you're thinking rates are at seven and a half, I'm going to wait till they get to six and a half to buy. The reality is you're going to be buying at a higher price. So when mortgage rates drop, prices will go up and people will be able to afford the higher prices. So using this example, 
If rates drop 1%, people could afford a $410,000, $430,000, even a $440,000 purchase price, and still have a lower monthly payment than the $400,000 house at a 7.5 rate. So even though housing prices can continue going way up, more people will be able to afford homes. If that doesn't make sense, just call me and I'll explain it. But prices can go up significantly, and more people will be able to afford homes, increasing demand. Both of those will be true when rates finally drop. And I want to remind you again, even before all of this craziness from 2020 on, every year I've met with dozens of buyers that told me the exact same thing and they wanted to wait to see what the market does next and now they're priced entirely out of the market. I don't want that to be you. So many buyers just five years ago could have bought a $200,000 home with a $1,200 a month payment. They decided to wait and now that exact same home is $350,000 with a $2,700 a month payment. And they literally just cannot buy a house anymore. And this is just over a five year span. And all because they just bought into this idea that the market has to crash and people can't afford it. I just wanna reiterate, this is not a new idea. This is an idea that is around every single year and has not happened. So please don't let yourself get sidelined from buying a house possibly permanently. Find a monthly payment that you can afford and just live in the house and enjoy it. Your first house is not your dream house. But if you wait, you may never be able to buy a house. And I'm not saying this to scare you. This is a reality that I've seen every single year. And I'm sure you probably have people in your life who have experienced the same thing. They could have bought a house, they didn't, now they can't. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's move on to national housing inventory. After two weeks of inventory growth slowing, it looks like we're getting really close to the seasonal peak of inventory this year. Last week, we did see another increase in active listings, but only by 59 homes in the entire country. Now, we did have a holiday weekend with Veterans Day, and holiday weekends can sometimes skew the data, so we'll have to wait until next week and see. But you can compare this tiny increase to last week's increase of 4,326 homes. And last year, the seasonal inventory peak was on October 28th, so we're already a few weeks past that, but it would make sense that we're about at the time where we need to see a seasonal peak of inventory. However, there are still 5,406 homes less on the market this year compared to last year, but the gap is closing at least. Now let's look at new listings. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, don't read too much into it because as you can see, all of these weeks can swing very wildly, but the good news is after trending way below for most of the year, for new listings coming onto market every week. We caught up the last two weeks, and this last week we actually had more listings come onto the market this week than we did the corresponding week the year before. And I've been saying the whole time, if we could end the year somewhere between the 21 and 22 range, anywhere in here, that would give us a great starting point for next year. But this is a great sign because we desperately need new listings to come onto the market. We need more supply if we want prices to come down. But all you need to know by looking at this chart is that every single week from here until the end of the year, we can expect there to be less and less new homes coming onto the market, which means if you don't like the homes that are on the market now, there's gonna be less and less to choose from every week, so when one finally comes on that you like, you need to be ready to go to get it. You have to already be pre-approved, be working with an agent, and ready to go immediately. Otherwise, it's gonna to go to somebody else who's ready. The last thing I wanna cover here is the percentage of homes having price decreases. As you can see, this week we're still 39.1% compared to 43% in the corresponding week last year, so still 4% less homes in the country having price drops compared to last year. And we're gonna zoom in on the local data here in a minute, but that does not suggest any type of housing crash at all. Less homes are having price drops now closer to 8% rates than they were a year ago. Okay, let's move on to mortgage rates. As you can see here, we started last week at a 7.48. We dropped down to a 7.41, but we ended the week with a bad bond auction that got us up to a 7.56. And let's see what the 10 year is doing today and see if we can get any idea of what that's gonna look like. Okay, looking at the 10 year, it looks like some very good news. We follow the 10 year treasury chart on Mondays because the actual mortgage rate for the day won't get posted until later around three or four o'clock. So we look at this to see in which direction are we headed. And as we can see, we opened up about where we had closed on Friday. We tried for a push up and immediately got rejected. So this is a good tone to set for the week. Now again, remember we do have the CPI report coming out tomorrow, which could change all of this. But what this tells you is as of now, the market does not think we're gonna head up higher because usually the bond market leads what they think the Fed is gonna do. So it would be really great to end this day lower and then continue through the week, get some good news. And I think our next stop would be way down here, which probably corresponds to maybe a 7.2 somewhere around their rate. So in summary, this is good news.
Now regarding mortgage purchase applications, we actually saw a 3% increase in the number of people applying for mortgages this week. And I was expecting a much bigger increase than this, especially since rates dropped over half a percent last week. But what it tells me is 7.5% is still too high for many buyers. My expectation is that real demand isn't gonna come in until 7% or below. But this makes for a total of 19 positive, 23 negative, and one completely neutral print for the year when it comes to mortgage applications. And if you think just because rates are up near 7.5%, you can no longer afford a house, I promise you still can. There are still ways that anyone can get their rate and their monthly payment down to an affordable range. It just takes a little strategy and planning. And I made a detailed video on this that you can watch here. So before you lose hope, make sure and watch this video. Okay, now we're moving on to the MLS data. Starting with Dallas County, we had 226 closed sales in the last seven days. That's 97 less than last week. 242 went under contract five more than last week, 494 listed, that's 45 more than last week. And of the homes closed, 48 of them were immediate sales, meaning they contracted within the first week. In total, there are 1,876 homes either under contract or in pending status, that's eight more than last week. Moving on to Collin County, 169 closed sales, 61 less than last week, 126 went under contract, 23 less than last week, 268 new listings, 21 less than last week. And in total, 1,419 homes are either under contract or in pending status. So you'll notice it looked like a very slow week. Specifically, there were a lot less closings than the previous week. Well, that's because four weeks ago when these homes would have been getting under contract is right when we were moving up to 8% rates for the first time. So remember, closed data is a lagging indicator. What you're seeing here is what happened 30 days ago. Okay, let's move on to housing data, starting with Dallas County. If you've seen my videos, you know what I use is called the Market Action Index. It takes all of this data, puts it into one easy to read graphic with a number. Anything below a 30 is a buyer's market anything above, and we're just asking how much of a seller's market are we in. Looking at Dallas County, the median list price has been holding firm. It only dropped $100 this week. Median price of new listings ticked up a little bit, but we don't pay much attention to that. Average days on market is dropping, but we usually look at median, which is holding firm at 42. The number of homes having price decreases as well, holding steady 46%, 46.42, so pretty much exactly where it was last week, and we'll zoom in on that in a minute. And housing inventory looks to have really stabilized. So again, that corresponds with, we should be seeing our seasonal peak soon, so we should start seeing the inventory number dropping. So yeah, we went from 33.62 up to 33.82, so only 20 more homes on the market this week. Again, that number should be slowing. We should see the peak soon and then a decline. And then the market action index, you can expect this number to go down Basically, it peaks at the end of July and just slowly drops until then. And of course, outside factors like high mortgage rates will cause this number to drop faster, but as you can see, it's not going straight down. It's just a slow orderly decline, which also lines up with seasonality. Now, looking at the number of homes having price decreases in Dallas County, we're at 46.42%, tiny drop from last week, but the corresponding one week a year ago, we were at 46.11, so almost exactly where we were a year ago. In a normal market, 2019, we would be at 46.31. So yeah, we're basically just totally in line with a normal seasonal number of homes having price drops. Now moving over to Collin County, the same thing. Their median list price did have a drop this week after holding around the 590s for a while. We dropped down to basically 580, though the median price of new listings had a small tick up. Their average days on market, again, a tiny drop as well one day, but the median is what we look at and that's at 42. Number of homes having price decreases, which we'll zoom in on, has been dropping. And their inventory was flat most of the year. It had a run up through October when rates were around that 8%. And the last few weeks has been pretty much back to steady. We actually saw a drop this week from 2218 to 2212. So they may have actually had their seasonal inventory peak last week. So again, less homes will be on the market and less new listings will be coming on for the rest of the year. With regards to properties having price decreases, they had they're down to 46.65. So Every week they're having less and less homes having price decreases. Corresponding to the last year, they're way lower. They were at 56.2%. And looking at a normal year 2019, they were at 49.09. So less homes having price decreases than in a normal market, but still kind of in that range. The point being here, there's no huge crash happening. It's a totally normal number of homes having price decreases. Now moving on to my favorite part of the video. This is using that same market action index number that we just discussed, showing if it's a buyer or seller's market. And based on that number, we rank the top 10 hottest and coolest cities and zip codes in all of Dallas and Collin County. So starting with the hottest cities, Carrollton and Coppell remain in their number two spots. Louisville heats up one, Irving cools off one, Duncanville jumps onto the list out of nowhere all the way up to number five, Garland cools off one, Prosper heats up two, Plano jumps on at number eight, 
Richardson cools off three, and Saxe jumps onto the list out of nowhere. So a ton of changes here. Grand Prairie, Grapevine, and Mesquite all fell off this week. Zooming into specific zip codes, the absolute hottest is Carrollton, Texas, 75010, followed by Irving, 75063, Carrollton, 75006, Louisville, 75077, Garland, 75041, Duncanville, 75116, Dallas, 75249, Carrollton, 75007, Louisville, 75067, and Plano, 75075. And if you'll remember, a 30 or below is a buyer's market, so you can see just how hot these zip codes are at a 66.4. So don't think that because the overall market is in the 40s that that means it's slow everywhere because these zip codes are still crazy hot. Now we're moving on, same thing, but for the coolest cities and zip codes, the absolute coolest remains Leonard, Texas, and it's still the only buyer's market as it's the only one under 30. Van Alstine remains in the number two spot and it's very close to a buyer's market. White, Wright, and Ferris also remain in their spots. Sunnyvale cools off one, Salina heats up one, Seagaville cools off one, Rockwall cools off one, Farmersville heats up two, and Roy City remains in the hottest city on the coolest cities list. Now looking at zip codes, the absolute coolest is Leonard, 75452, followed by Van Alstine, 75495, White Wright, 75491, Ferris, 75125, Sunnyvale, 75182, Grand Prairie, 75054, Salina, 75009, Dallas 75220, Seagaville 75159, and Dallas 75212. That's it for this week. I would love to hear any thoughts from you in the comments below, any questions you have, any thoughts you have about the state of the market. As always, if you're looking to buy or sell in the Dallas area, call, text, or shoot me an email. All that is in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.